So, anybody here can tell me what is going wrong with this animation? If you can, congratulations. If you can't, we're going to talk about that right here today. Because I have a number of animation notifiers here, I've got one that destroys the enemy, that's fine. But I've also got this turn on visual effects and turn off visual effects, which just turns off and on a particle system while this enemy is dying. And this I need to then go into my animation blueprint in my event graph and those simply uh, set death particles to true and to false. I need to implement this in every single enemy blueprint and it's just tedious. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to be making an animation notify here to make this just a little bit smoother. So let's get to working on that and I'm just going to go in my blueprints folder. Don't mind my project being a mess. Yours is too, probably, right? So we'll make a uh, blueprint class here and we'll search up for anim notify. And then we want to scroll down a little bit until we find anim notify state. You probably have a few less anim notifies and states here. Um, <laughs> and that's because a lot of these are, are brought in with the gameplay ability system, which I have in this project. Don't worry about that. Make a anim notify state blueprint and we'll call this a BP anim notify uh, and we'll call this death effects because we're going to be using this for the enemy uh, death particle then when we open up that blueprint we can see we have a number of overridable functions uh, we have the notify name uh, the default trigger weight threshold we're not going to be worried about either of those at the moment really what we want is the beginning the end and you can also do things on the tick so that's just every frame that this is active is going to do something for us, what we're going to do is we're going to be overriding the begin notify and the end notify, because those are the only two at the moment that I really do care about. So start with the begin notify, and here we have a couple of parameters to uh, work with. So we have the mesh component that this animation is running on. We have the animation asset itself, or a reference to it rather, the duration of the notify length, and then some event reference things in the structs. What we care about at the moment is the mesh, and we want to get the owner of this mesh, and that will get us a actor. That actor we can cast to, in my case, I'm going to cast that to my enemy class, because that holds the function for turning off and turning on the particle effects. So what we'll do is we'll say, uh, as enemy, we want to set death particles and in this case we want to set it to true and then we want to go into the return node then i'll copy this over to the receive notify end and we'll do much of the same thing so we'll try to get the owner from the mesh comp then we'll cast that to the enemy and then we'll simply set the set death particles thing to being false and if you want to know about this function uh, that is a c plus plus function that i made and is literally just gets the death particle component on this thing and sets its active state to uh, the input for the function. So it's a really, really simple function. But don't worry about that. You can execute any code you want here on whatever class you're casting to uh, to begin with. So now that we have both of those set up, now it's as easy as just like saving this stuff real quick. Uh, we can, instead of turning off and on with these notifies, what we can do is I can say, hey, we add a notify state and we can add our BP and notify death effect. And this now has a duration in which it will be active. So when this starts activating, it will start emitting the particles when it dies, which it only do in game, not in this actual animation. And then when it ends, it will uh, stop emitting those particles. Now there's a couple of good things about this, and that is if I go into an entirely unrelated enemy, uh, which I have probably somewhere, I have another enemy here which has a death animation and in here as well if i go into its event graph you will see that i had to make those same animation notifies in this event graph as well uh, with this event notify that i have now i don't need to do that i can just reuse the code that i just made so let's um, add animation notify state use the death animation uh, particle effect thing and it's just as simple easy and quick as that now Another potential upside, which in this scenario that we're working with here isn't really relevant, but something that I do want to point out is that this start and end is effectively the same as just having two notifies. I am aware of that. 
But something that you can do with this, which is really, really difficult with just adding a bunch of notifies, is overriding this um, tick event. And this just works the same as your event tick on whatever object that you might be working on. And if you want to, I don't know, while a certain animation is playing, every frame emits a particle. Something weird like that, right? You can do it with this uh, very, very easily. And in much the same way, uh, what we can do is I have attack animations as well. And here I have these notifies for uh, turn on the damage box. And once the attack is finished, we turn off the damage box once again. This as well could be a notify. And that altogether just would save me a lot of headache having to recreate the same code in like 50 different places, even though it's just two or three nodes every single time. If I then want to change anything about how that works, I need to go through all of my different enemies and change it. And now it is more centralized in one location. So it's just easier to work with. I hope this has been helpful, showing a little bit about the basic idea of animation notify states. And again, it's not a huge difference, but the more you scale up your project, the more you're going to be thankful for using the things as they're meant to be used and using those notify states. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,